PBS Frontline's Lowell Bergman investigates human smuggling on the U.S.-Mexican border tonight. The investigation is a joint Frontline New York Times project. You'll see Bergman interview a man who's been smuggling people across the border for 10 years. And you'll also learn how the business is so lucrative that U.S. border agents have given in to accepting bribes and participating in the smuggling. The investigation includes an interview with an immigration expert who says that increased border enforcement has some unintended consequences. He says, the enforcement has increased resident illegal populations because workers now cannot go home to visit families, knowing that it's going to be so difficult to get back into the United States. And that stronger enforcement has also made smuggling big business. When the risk of getting caught is higher, immigrants will pay more to get passage. I interviewed Bergman by Skype to learn more about the investigation. Well, there were a series of surprises. The first really general surprise was in talking with uh, officials of Department of Homeland Security that they were unable to give me a, even an estimate on the number of people who get across the border illegally. The only thing they could tell me was that what they call apprehension statistics, that is how many people are picked up trying to get across, but that's not even that accurate because that counts every time a single individual tries to like, repeatedly cross. Do you think they don't know how many people get across? Well, that's when we went to Professor Wayne Cornelius at the University of California, San Diego. He's been studying this for over 20 years, the migration across the border. And when I asked him that question, his answer was, they don't know. We meet with them regularly. Um, they don't, apparently, they don't even do intelligence estimates on uh, how many people are coming across. So he, his latest study was to do, interview 3,000 migrants, both uh, on this side of the border and also from the people on the other side who come across regularly. And what he discovered was what, another big surprise, that 97 percent, and these, by, by the way, all these interviews were with people since 9-11, uh, and um, his conclusion was 97 percent of the people who try to get across get across. Now, how could that be possible in a period where we beefed up the Border Patrol, and particularly along the California border, where we have the longest fence and the most, if you will, the most militarized border between the U.S. and Mexico? What was Border Patrol's response to that 97 percent estimate? They don't dispute it. Wow. They just, they don't, they don't, they'll tell you they don't know. Customs and Border Protection and ICE, we asked both of them, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. And so... How could that be true? Well, what he pointed out and what the smugglers who we interview in, in Mexico told us is that the business has changed since 9-11 and particularly since the wall was built in San Diego. What was once a business with, where there were some guides involved and smugglers who might bring people across, in general, most people could come across on their own. You know, there was that famous rush across the border shot that you could see every sundown. Well, that's no longer that easy to do on your own. So big, expanding, organized business in Mexico is human smuggling. But unlike the drug traffickers, and there is some overlap between the two, but it appears that in general there are separate kinds of businesses. And the human smuggling business is a, a business that now only, you only get paid if you help someone across the border, if they get across successfully. And 97% do. Um, and eventually, because the, the smugglers will give you at least three tries. Now, they don't get paid unless they get you across. Are these people are they, coming in, like, uh, hidden in vehicles or something, or how are they getting across? Well, they're getting across about a fifth of the people, according to Cornelius, who are coming across successfully, get through what we call the ports of entry. You know, that is in right where you line up to come through the border, let's say, in uh, San Ysidro, which is the crossing between Tijuana and San Diego, the busiest border land bar crossing in the world. And some are hidden in vehicles. Some have false ID, either phony ID, or if in the case of the higher paying clientele, you can actually get real U.S. visas, for instance, and passports. Um, the, range, the price range for coming right through the border, that is right through a port of entry, is somewhere between two and $10,000, depending upon uh, what the mode of transportation is. Now, Many people uh, are this, this has become this so has become lucrative so. that you even included in your investigation how some Border Patrol agents are getting caught up in helping this to happen, true? A half, since 
we locked the story last week, the television version of the story. So you'll see this in the New York Times. There's been a half a dozen more arrests of border protectors and some border patrol people, you know, all along the border in the last week. Just as we were ending our sort of reporting for the television version, another inspector was arrested at the Otay Mesa crossing, which is just east of the main San Ysidro crossing. How widespread do you suspect this is? Well, again, the U.S. government doesn't know. You, you go in and talk, the FBI um, has a priority program that is, you know, it's terrorism, cybercrime, and then it's public corruption as their third pro uh, priority program. So because of that, they have created these border corruption task forces, and one of the most active is in San Diego. And when you talk with the officials who run that task force, they just, all they can tell you is they're not going out of business anytime soon. They have a big backlog of cases because to make most of these cases uh, against a border inspector usually requires undercover operations, may require wiretaps or surveillance, as you'll see in the case that we present in the story. So it takes them a long time to do these cases at the same time. Uh, I've heard estimates that as many as 5% of the people working the border are in danger, but nobody really has any, again, there is no government ass assessment of what the level of corruption is.